First of all, I uh, want to thank everyone for uh, being here today. Uh, trust me uh, when I say I've been taking the time to make sure uh, that things uh, get done right. Now, I've been a, a public servant for nearly 30 years, uh, first as sheriff and now as Wayne County executive. And I've been proud of my administration and what's it done in working to solve problems facing our county and providing strong and honest leadership. Now the recent events have been the most challenging and I can tell you it's been the most humbling experiences I've had to face in my public life. In the past month, my leadership has been brought into question. Now, there have been many stories reported over the course of the last few months about me and my administration. So it's time to set the record straight, and transparency is the key. Now, I've always been a fair man, a man of my word, and a man that people can trust. I cannot afford to have the trust that I have built. I'm talking about my reputation, my word, my administration, suffer any more than it already has by the events that have transpired recently. So, and I said it before, and I mean it, I'm sorry for the events that have brought us to this point. I'm making changes, and I'm committed to renewing the faith of the people of Wayne County. Now, Wayne County is a large organization, and I take responsibility for mistakes made under my watch. I'm the leader. The buck stops with me. But also as a leader, I'm committed to transparency, holding people accountable, and not only to find the problems, but the most important is to fix them. It's important to me to have people beside me that I can trust and rely on. Now, with the status of the current controversies, which could go on for some time, the current executive team in place would do nothing but cause further distractions and impede the progressive flow of daily county business. So over the course of the last few weeks, I've been taking a good hard look within, and it's time to make some necessary changes. Wayne County cannot go back to business as usual. And there has to be some changes, and I'm willing to make them. In that spirit, let me first address some important personal issues, uh, personnel issues. As you know, on October 11th, I placed as I'm elder my deputy county executive, Mary Ann Talon, my corporation counsel, in administrative leave for 30 days in the aftermath of the Drakean Mullen severance issue. I also dismissed Tim Taylor, a former director of human resources, who had been working part-time since May. Over the course of the past nine years, I've come to rely and depend on my deputy CEO, Azam Elder. He has risen through the ranks here at Wayne County from our corporation council. He's been instrumental in our Aerotropolis vision, this guardian building and its renovation, and one of our most successful programs known as Turbo. Mr. Elder is driven, he's an innovative leader, and he's a forward thinker. So it was with heavy heart that I recently accepted the voluntary resignation of Mr. Elder. It was in the best interest of the county, under the current situation, for him to remove himself from his position with the county. This resignation is not a negative reflection on Mr. Elder. Neither his character nor his integrity has been, been, and he has been a trusted employee for many years. He has worked tirelessly for Wayne County, and he'll be missed because he's a friend, and I'm sorry that he does have to leave under these circumstances. Another personnel change is in the name of Marianne Talon, who has been with the county for nearly 12 years. Now, Marianne has done an excellent job as Director of Corporation Council, and she's a valued employee. She's dedicated and very skilled. And she's been given the option to remain in the Office of Corporation Counsel as a civil service employee, in other words, to bump down. So let me say this very straight. Today is a change for Wayne County. In finding replacements for these two employees, I've looked for leaders with broad and extensive experience and impeccable reputations. So today I want to introduce you to some new faces on my team who will be sent to the Commission for confirmation. 
Deputy Chief Executive Officer, former U.S. Attorney General for the Eastern District, and my new deputy is going to be Jeffrey Collins. Director of Corporation Counsel, Attorney Zena El Hassan, and Director of Economic Development, Ray Byers. So my new deputy, former U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District, Jeffrey Collins. Jeff, as you know, is a man of impeccable credentials who will not only do an outstanding job, but will also assure the people of Wayne County that I am reaching out to select strong leaders who are known for uncompromised honesty and integrity. The new Director of Corporation Counsel is Attorney Zaina El Hassan. She's an accomplished attorney with a strong background in real estate, land use, zoning, environmental issues. She'll also bring with her extensive knowledge in handling cases from large corporations, small businesses, to nonprofits. And the new Director of Economic Development is Ray Byers. Ray understands Wayne County, and he understands how to get things done. With a career with Ford Motor Company that spanned nearly three decades, he brings with him the priceless experience and knowledge. Ray will be a tremendous asset to the county, and will be a huge help in bringing new business to our county. So I'm going to thank all of them for becoming a key part of our team here at Wayne County. Our new team will be transitioning into their new roles in the coming weeks. And I can tell you this, it's time for a fresh start in Wayne County, and these staff changes are the first step in that direction. Now, I know that all of us have a long road ahead of us. Earlier I stated that I wanted to clear the air and the issues and stories that have been discussed in the media. And this hasn't changed. It's been said that have we been dodging the media. No, in actuality, I've been getting my house in order. So I'm willing and welcome the opportunity to discuss the business of Wayne County. And before we take questions, I'm going to have each one of the uh, new uh, people on our team to say a few words. Jeffrey, you want to start? First, I'd like to thank Mr. Facano for the confidence that he has placed in me. I'm excited about being a part of this new team. Today is a fresh start, a new beginning. No one has the power to unring the bell, but I'm happy to be a part of the solution to help to make sure that best practices are followed and to help, as the county executive said, to renew public confidence in Wayne County government. And with the team that Mr. Facano has assembled, I know we will get the ship on the right course. Thank you. Good evening. I, too, want to thank uh, Mr. Facano for the opportunity to take on this new role as Corporation Counsel. I'm excited as well to work with the team that he's put in place. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a challenge, but I'm up for it. In addition, I look forward to serving the people of Wayne County. So thank you very much. You know, she's the tallest one, too. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank Bob as well. I look forward to the challenge. I've spent a great deal of time on other issues with Wayne County. Uh, the experience I had at Ford, I think, will help. I look forward to the new team. These are wonderful people. We've spent the last uh, last hour and a half talking among ourselves about the challenge and how much we look forward to it. So again, I, I thank Bob for the for the challenge he's given me and us, and I look forward to it. Thank you. Okay. Questions? Executive, can you talk about your conversation with Azam Elder and what he said to you when he offered his resignation? Well, that was a private discussion. Obviously, it's painful uh, and it's difficult, and uh, he's been, uh, a, you know, a, a very good uh, hard worker for Wayne County, and a lot of the uh, vision that we've had, he's helped implement. Do you feel betrayed by these two? Uh, no. I mean, in terms of uh, what you have to look at is what are we doing right now to move forward. Uh, there are a lot of positive things. Uh, what I'm concerned about is that can we move forward with controversy still following us? That became the, the bottom line. Uh, so at, at this point, uh, I want to move forward and, and make sure that we do things that are going to be uh, positive for the people of Wayne County. Look, a fresh sharp start, a new beginning, a new breath is not uncommon. It uh, happens quite a bit, whether you're in the private sector or whether you're in the public sector. And so this is a fresh start. We're moving forward. We're going to see uh, uh, that you're going to see great things come from uh, from Wayne County and the team that we've developed. What do you say to taxpayers to see this, sir, um, see these, this $200,000 severance and see the other packages that were offered to employees and were on the investment plan? I mean, some people think you've been toned up. 
where uh, unions have taken uh, pay cuts, and you know, how do you respond to that? There's on why the severance is going to be. Well, first of all, let's let's start with how the record is. Number one, when I first came into office, I cut every at-will employee's salary by 14 percent. Uh, I have reduced down uh, the number of people that work uh, in Wayne County uh, from when I first came in from uh, 5,300 to now about 3,500. Uh, the past three years, everybody who's an at-will employee has been getting a 10% pay cut, including myself and, and what we've been doing. We've been challenging the bonus check. Uh, the 13th check uh, uh, that it uh, is known as. The severance package, and I, we've talked about it, that was a mistake. The money has been repaid, uh, and that uh, is something that uh, is not going to happen again. And with us looking at the policies and procedures, I'm going to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Is the Zon Melder going to receive any kind of severance or party compensation? He will not get any severance. Uh, if he gets anything, he'll get whatever uh, every employee leaves, which I believe is his um, vacation days. What are the salaries of the new employees? Um, uh, Ray's going to be a bargain. He's going to be at $100,000 versus uh, his predecessor, which was 200, And both of them will be at the same salaries as uh, their predecessors. Is the county's relationship with Edge Opportunities going to change? Edge Opportunities? You mean with, that, uh, with the committee? But whatever the nonprofit. Oh, the nonprofit. Um, it's, it's interesting. I know there's been a, a lot of uh, interest in that. First of all, that model is uh, quite common as compared to uh, how Detroit runs its uh, nonprofit for economic development, MEDC. Uh, is uh, a similar type uh, uh, model as well in, in the way that it is set up. One of the things that was a concern was that the number of people that are on uh, that committee, I believe if you look at it, there's 19 people that serve on that committee. It goes anywhere from the uh, uh, organized labor, which is Bob uh, King from the UAW, the Teamsters, uh, the Carpenters, and it has uh, other business people that's been in there. What is unique is that it combines both business and labor, unlike most of those nonprofits that primarily always have business that, that sit, that's part of it. The reason why that was set up and this is very clear, is that we did not want to use taxpayers' money for trade missions and for other things that we thought the business community and the labor community would be very interested in making sure that there was availability of. For example, out of this committee, we went to Turin, Italy. We brought Bob King, and we were looking at and, and all the business leaders and labor leaders of bringing Fiat and its suppliers into this area. As soon as it was announced that Chrysler and Fiat were going to combine and they were going to come here, we went and we went out with a trade mission out of this committee in order to bring them here. Number two, one of the bugaboos here in southeastern Michigan is that are we more expensive because of organized labor being here? That committee has sponsored a, 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 a study by University of Michigan that shows and compares the study rates of this area versus areas such as Alabama and the advantages of actually locating business that's up here. And the other thing, the third thing that has been so valuable that that committee has done and done with those proceeds, and all this money was raised privately. If we were trying to do this with public money, you probably would be asking me other questions right now. But privately, what we're able to do is that site selectors are the ones that actually advise many times corporations where they want to locate. They, they go to site selectors. As you know, uh, EDGE, uh, the economic development, was selected as one of the ten best economic development uh, organizations in the country. They just won the award for it. So what this committee did, this nonprofit did, is that it, it went out, it, it went and it contacted some of the top site selectors in the United States. And we said to them, why don't you ever recommend to your companies that they come to southeastern Michigan? So what we did is we brought them here. Uh, we had uh, a two-day seminar. You had people like uh, Tony Early from DTE. You had Bob King there. You had people both on the labor and business side talking to these site selectors. It was at the book Cadillac. And they did it for those eight. We brought them to places uh, such as Greenfield Village. And so for the first time, they were actually able to see, and many of them had, all they did was believe the myths of southeastern Michigan. A number of them hadn't been here for 10 years. All they knew about is what they read about in national publications or came sometimes from the local media. So this committee, at no expense to the taxpayers, are the ones that have been able to go ahead and bring these type of things in for economic growth here.
There will be no bonus, but at the same time, he's going to review all the committees and what he thinks is going to be necessary. Maybe director of the nonprofit. That's to be determined. That group does not currently disclose all of its donors. You mentioned earlier that transparency is the key. Are you going to commit to make that group more transparent? I think all the donors are transparent. If you go on the website, you'll see everybody that contributes. So that's on there. The website's down, sir. Huh? Website okay, well, they'll, they'll put it back up and they'll, they'll show you all the people that uh, contribute to it. And they, they'll file all the regulations they need with the, uh, with the uh, 990. And I know one of the issues that came up with it, which I thought was kind of interesting, they said, well, do any of these people have actual contracts with Wayne County? Seven out of the nine has been at least focused on uh, by the media. Uh, two of the largest ones is one is uh, Walbridge, uh, Mr. Ricolta, and the other one is uh, Cindy Paskey with uh, strategic staffings. And let me say this, they have followed the procurement uh, process. I think if you were to check, strategic staffings has bid and lost on eight projects that they have bid on. They have one on six, and they've gone through the uh, process. Walbridge, the only bid that they have actually won has been the jail. They bid on uh, a plant downriver uh, in order to do renovation. Uh, they also bid on the major renovation for Cobo Hall, and they bid on this building. They didn't get any of those bids. They, they were not the lowest bidder, so they didn't get it. So I think, in a way, we don't want to make sure, or I know that we want to make sure that the business community and the people that are active, because they are the ones that want to make sure that jobs come in here. And it's, it's completely transparent on their bids and where they bid and what they've won and what they've lost. And they've followed the procurement process. What do you think should happen with the airport at this point? And uh, the board, uh, many people think it's too closely tied and controlled by yourself. Should it be more independent? Well, first of all, uh, historically, the board has seven seats. Wayne County is responsible for a billion dollars of bonds for the airport. If anything happens to that airport, it's not the state of Michigan, it's not Romulus, it's Wayne County that has the responsibility uh, for that airport. So there should be, obviously, county representation on that airport authority. If there's anybody uh, in the current term that has too close a tie uh, that they feel to, to Wayne County, where it has an appearance uh, that it's too close a tie, I would have absolutely no problem if they want to step down. How many other nonprofits are there designed to attract business to Wayne County other than Edge? I, I'm not sure. You said it's a new day for the county. What other changes do you need to make besides personnel? We're constantly going to review, but I want the team to come in and look at what they're going to do in policies and procedures. We've already started uh, to implement some of them. For example, uh, we made a, a, a commitment uh, that now the, any uh, package of any director or, or department head that goes down, it goes in front of the commission, and any type of package uh, uh, is going to be completely disclosed to them besides just their salaries uh, uh, that is part of it. You essentially blame Talon and Elder in your last press conference for the server scandal, the undated letter. Did they act on their own? What I said was, and this is, you know, as you know, part of the investigation, and I'll say the same thing. There were mistakes that were made, and they shouldn't have been made. I hold people accountable. Ultimately, the buck stops with me, so I'll take responsibility for it. The changes are in place. We're doing things so that doesn't happen again. But did they act on their own? At this point, that's all part of the investigation, and so it would be premature for me to say, I'll be, I'd love to talk about it. Once it's done, we'll be glad to talk to you about well, it. Have you been contacted by the FBI? Have you me personally? Yeah. No. What can you tell us about the lawsuit that was filed alleging that Trudia Mullen asked that federal funds be put into the nonprofit? I'm, I'm not aware of it. I mean, I'm not aware of what the lawsuit involves. The federal funds, she asked for federal funds to be put improperly into the Wayne County Business Development Corporation Fund. Did that happen? I our attorneys are looking at it. I, I, I believe we, I don't even know if we've been served with the lawsuit yet. I believe they released it to the media before we were served with it, so I think we have to, our, our attorneys will respond within the uh, appropriate time. Legal, legal experts have looked at Tukia Mullins' possible lawsuit against the county and said that you may have to pay as much as a million dollars to her. How do you respond to that? Uh, the county would? county would. No, there's no, there's no liability of the county to uh, Ms. Mullins. Can you talk about why you opted for a suspension of Elder and Talon and now are, you know, um they've asked to resign? Can you clarify why? Well, Mr. Elder has, uh, first of all, 
to have a fresh start and with the, the controversies that have been flowing, uh, it's not unusual for any organization, whether you're public or private, to try to f a fresh start and to move on. Uh, they have been invaluable employees, but at the same time, you have to start anew. And they tendered their resignation uh, at this point, and uh, I've accepted them, and I want to move on because I believe that we have fresh eyes, we have new policies uh, that are going to be implemented, and I think you're going to see great things for Wayne County. Could you Our, clarify, did you ask them to resign? They voluntarily uh, offered their resignation. Have a question for Mr. Collins. Yes. As a former U.S. attorney, uh, administration has had subpoenas served by the FBI. What kind of due diligence or checking out did you do to make sure you weren't getting involved in something that was going to... Well, I am, I am very confident that, and was very encouraged, I thought it was significant that early on Mr. Facano pledged his cooperation with the federal investigation. You have to let that take its course. But from speaking with Mr. Facano, I am very confident that at the end of that day that there would be no criminality. He is uh, still on, we're, we're doing a, a review of uh, his department. He's still uh, uh, on leave. Is it too late for you to earn back trust if you feel like this doesn't change? Oh, we're going to earn back everybody's trust one day at a time. And that's what we're going to do. They're going. What we plan to show is that Wayne County is going to work. Wayne County is going to be the best county in southeastern Michigan, if not the state of Michigan. And we're going to show that we have the ability to do it. We we have been able to attract investment and in record numbers to this county. And I know that there's some issues about uh, how much investment was here. We're today releasing the numbers of 5.4. Uh, it'd be in a package here of all the companies. MEDC said that in the past uh, 5.4 billion. MEDC on their own website said in the past two years there has been six billion dollars of investment in Wayne County. So it's an attractive place. It's a place where businesses want to do business and the taxpayers deserve the best government possible. In light of the transparency. How do you think you can prove the people of Wayne County? that procedurally things have changed in your administration? Well, we're going to be completely transparent. We'll have things and whenever we, if we find something wrong, we're going to make sure that that person's held accountable. And if, it's, if they ever do anything criminal, we've always stated that, even you know, from my days as sheriff, that you're going to face the bar of justice. Uh, there's no tolerance for that. And policies and procedures that if they were sloppy in the past, uh, we're going to be transparent and show how they got tightened up. In light of that transparency and trying to regain some of that trust, is there any consideration being made taking political donations for PAC contributions from businesses that are winning big contracts with the county? We're going to follow the campaign finance laws. You see the need for any changes in procurement policies, revolving door policies for appointees um, and employees, anything like that? Sure. I uh, strengthened it and I uh, sent down to the commission, uh, and that be part of the package that you can have, of uh, uh, an executive order that I signed that uh, uh, they, it gets its contract managers, as they call it. Uh, that they are the ones that are supposed to uh, disclose uh, if they get any contracts uh, once they leave the county and things like that, I believe up to 12 months uh, up to that point. I'm paraphrasing this. Uh, what I've done is expanded it not just to the contract managers, because those are the people that actually run the contracts for each department, uh, expanded to all uh, not, um, uh, to uh, all um, people that uh, are employed, or I should say all people that are at will. Uh, for uh, uh, people that work in the executive's office. Federal auditors called for Mr. Parlevecchio to be you know, taken off that uh, height building contract. Will you know if that call for him to step down from that? I think, I believe already has. What about a revolving door policy? Should he be able to... to I, I just stated, I just stated what... Uh, what the strength and policy is. Because if anybody were to choose to try to do that route, now they would have to go in front of the Board of Commissioners, and anything like that would have to be not only disclosed but approved. Okay, well, I think we've tried to answer all your questions. Thank you very much and appreciate it. You have been listening to Wayne County Executive Robert Facano talking about the shakeup in his administration.
And of course, we were introduced to some new faces, members of his team, uh, Jeffrey Collins, the new deputy, in a sense, would become Bob Ficano's right-hand man, who said he's very excited about it and wants to ensure that the best practices are followed. Uh, what do we know about him? What can you tell me about this? Is this a good choice? I think it's a very interesting choice. As we reported in our special Wayne County Confidential last night, when Ficano came into office in 2003, he inherited a mess. There was a federal investigation of the McNamara administration. Rumors were swirling of mass corruption. Who did he bring in to tell the employees about ethics? He brought in Jeffrey Collins. Mm -hmm. So now he finds himself in a similar mess, and he's bringing Jeffrey Collins into the fold to help clean it up again. Uh, Mr. Collins is a Republican. He's pretty well respected as a lawyer. He was appointed by George W. Bush. Uh, he served time as a Wayne County Circuit Court judge. He was on the Court of Appeals. And uh, he knows something about corruption in Wayne County because while he was the U.S. attorney, he actually investigated the McNamara administration. It didn't go too far. McNamara was never indicted, but one of his aides was indicted and convicted of bribery and conspiracy. So it'll be interesting to see what he does once he gets, uh, gets in there and gets to work. He has been in private practice with his wife, and I think his life is about to get oh, a lot busier. A lot more interesting, too, I think. Thank you.